So let's continue with the topic of uh, polarization in a dielectric. So polarization in dielectric. So uh, let us consider a dielectric okay. so let us say this is a dielectric and uh, this is polarized by uh, an electric field so this represents a polarized dielectric So uh, we know we have studied that uh, the quantity, uh, the polarization P, is uh, defined as the net dipole moment per unit volume as the volume tends to zero. By delta V as this volume tends to zero. So this is the definition for uh, polarization. So let us, uh, so this is, uh, this represents uh, the, okay, this is the uh, polarized dielectric. So let us consider a small volume element dV uh, here. So to indicate uh, the source we use this symbol dv prime and uh, so this is located at uh, x dash y dash and z dash so this uh, let us consider the volume element uh, dv dash at uh, uh, the location x dash y dash z dash and uh, uh, we'll try to find out the potential at uh, x y z Okay. So here uh, we are interested in determining the potential due to the entire uh, uh, region of the dielectric which is polarized. Okay. So we know that uh, a dipole will uh, produce uh, an electric potential uh, uh, at some point. Okay. And uh, here we are interested in finding out the potential at this point P due to this entire polarized dielectric. Now, uh, in order to do that, we will first consider this uh, differential volume element dV dash, which is located at x dash, y dash and z dash. And uh, we will try to find out the potential at P due to this uh, uh, polarized dielectric within this small volume element dV dash. So here, uh, the potential at uh, point P, okay. So uh, we will use the symbol uh, instead of uh, P, we will use the symbol Q which will be convenient here because P will use it for polarization. So we are interested in finding out the potential, uh, potential at point Q due to this entire polarized dielectric. Now the potential at Q due to this uh, dipoles uh, within this uh, uh, volume element dV dash is given by dV okay and uh, so here uh, we know that uh, the potential uh, due to a dipole here is given by p dash dv dot ar by 4 pi epsilon naught R square or we can write it as P dot AR by 4 pi epsilon naught R square dV dash. So here R is the vector from uh, X dash by dash Z dash to X Y Z.
so if we uh, observe this uh, here uh, r is given by the vector uh, r is given by x minus x dash ax plus y minus y dash ay z minus z dash az so the magnitude of the vector r is given by x minus x dash ax oh sorry so it is given by x minus x dash square y minus y dash square plus z minus z dash square to the power 1 by 2 so this is the magnitude of the vector r and here uh, we can be shown that the gradient of uh, 1 by r okay so the gradient of 1 by r which is given by dou by dou x dash of 1 by r x plus dou by dou y of 1 by r a y plus dou by dou z of 1 by r oh sorry 1 by z uh, sorry 1 by r here and a z ok so it can be shown that it is equal to x minus x dash x plus y minus y dash a y plus z minus z dash a z by the expense x dash square plus y minus y dash square plus z minus z dash square all to the power of 3 by 2 so this can be verified or it can be it is nothing but it is equal to vector r by r cube or we can write it as one by r square vector r by r and here this is nothing but the unit vector ar okay so this parameter is the unit this vector quantity is the unit vector ar so this whole thing can be written as ar by r square so here uh, we have used this uh, prime uh, to indicate that the differentiation is carried with respect to x dash y dash and uh, z dash sorry here it should be y dash and z dash and uh, because here the uh, variable here is uh, uh, x dash y dash z dash whereas the point x y dash x y z is fixed so it is uh, it can be uh, seen that the gradient of 1 by r is given by a r by r square so therefore the expression let's call this as 1 okay so here this can be rewritten as dv is equal to so we have this expression here r square dv dash so this can be written as because ar by r square that is this quantity ar by r square can be written as uh, gradient of 1 by r so we can uh, write this as p dot
gradient of 1 by r whole divided by 4 pi epsilon dv dash so let's call this as 2 now we can see that uh, this uh, quantity can be rewritten using the vector identity. So the vector identity is uh, given by divergence of f a. Here f is a scalar and a is a vector. So this can be written as f dot here we will use uh, divergence that is differentiation with respect to uh, x dash y dash z we will uh, x dash y dash z dash we will use plus a dot gradient of f. So therefore we can uh, write uh, this as equal to a dot gradient of f as equal to divergence of f a minus f divergence of a. Sorry, this is a vector a. So, here we can see that uh, in this equation, uh, so we can have uh, a as p and uh, f as 1 by r. So therefore, this equation can be rewritten as divergence of f a. So here f a here is uh, p by r minus f f here is 1 by r and uh, divergence of a a here is uh, p so uh, this expression here can be rewritten so if you substitute uh, this 3 in 2 we will be getting and we will we can rewrite this equation as dv so dv can be rewritten as So, 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught and uh, so this expression will substitute from here. So, this can be rewritten as divergence of P by R minus one by R divergence of P and the volume element dV dash. So uh, this is the expression for the potential due to the volume element. Uh, in the potential due to the uh, dipole in the volume element dv dash. So, in order to obtain the total potential, 
at uh, q okay in order to obtain the total potential at q due to this entire polarized dielectric we have to integrate throughout the region of the dielectric so that is dv has to be integrated throughout the volume of the polarized dielectric or we can uh, write this as One by four pi epsilon naught. So here integration is with respect to v dash. So here, uh, using uh, Gauss divergence theorem, this can be converted to a surface integral. So V can be rewritten as. So here, this can be converted to a surface integral by using Gauss divergence theorem. So we can write the potential. Due to the entire polarized dielectric, as so now this is over the surface of the uh, surface which is enclosing the dielectric. Minus one by four pi epsilon naught. So this will not change. But finally, this can be written as. P dash J N plus divergence of P by four pi epsilon naught R So this is the expression for the uh, potential due to the polarized dielectric. So here, uh, this uh, ds is uh, written as the vector ds is written as magnitude of ds and the unit vector an, which is normal to ds. So here, the surface integral is carried out over the surface enclosing the dielectric. So here, so here, this is the surface over which uh, the integrate surface integration is carried out, whereas the volume integration is carried out throughout this uh, region. Okay, so throughout this region, the volume integration is carried out. So, if you observe uh, the first integral, okay. so uh, this is uh, in the form of. Okay, so we can write that uh, this in the form of uh, the potential due to a surface charge distribution. Okay.
and the second term is similar to the potential due to a volume charge distribution. So we know that this is the expression for the potential due to a surface charge distribution over a, a closed surface and uh, this is the potential uh, at some point due to uh, volume charge distribution. So a polarized dielectric can be, uh, rather we will call this as the, uh, instead of uh, rho, uh, sigma s, we will call it as the sigma p s to distinguish between uh, free charges and uh, the charges which have arrest due to the polarization. So here we will call this as rho rho pv. Okay. So here the potential at this uh, point q uh, due to the polarized dielectric is uh, can be regarded as the potential sum of the potentials due to a surface charge distribution sigma p s and a volume charge distribution sigma uh, rho p v. Okay. So, uh, um, so basically what can be done is this uh, polarized dielectric uh, what is shown here okay this polarized uh, dielectric can be regarded as as made up of so let's say this is the polarized dielectric so <coughs> so this uh, polarized dielectric can be considered so it is having a large number of dipoles okay so it is having this uh, number of dipoles So we know that uh, whenever a uh, dielectric is polarized, the uh, dielectrics are formed. Okay, so this can be regarded as made up of uh, made up of one okay a surface charge distribution. Okay, and this surface charge distribution is given by sigma p s and also a volume charge distribution. Where the volume charge distribution is given by rho v v. Okay. So uh, to repeat this uh, polarized dielectric. Okay. So this polarized dielectric can be considered or is equivalent to a surface charge distribution sigma p s over the surface of the dielectric curve okay. and uh, a volume charge distribution throughout the volume of the dielectric curve. Okay. So, and here the surface charge distribution sigma p s is given by p dot a n and the volume charge density that is uh, rho p v is given by minus divergence of p okay so uh, but uh, the difference between uh, uh, this uh, charges which have arisen due to polarization and uh, the free charges is that these charges are not uh, free okay they are bound charges okay so here this is the a bound surface charge density and this is bound volume charge density. So they are not free to move as in the case of conductors. So some of this uh, total charges is still equal to 0 here in this case. So the effect of uh, um, the dielectric can be considered by uh, replacing the dielectric uh, material as consisting of a surface charge density, the R surface charge distribution that is bound surface charge distribution and uh, bound volume charge distribution in free space. So we can uh, uh, remove this material, okay, uh, the dielectric material, and uh, this dielectric material can be uh, for the purpose of calculating the potential at uh, 
a point it can be considered as made up of two uh, bone uh, chart distribution that is one sur bone surface chart distribution and one bound volume chart distribution in free space okay. so that is the idea given by this equation what we have derived here with this we will end this session